Direction and distance. Have you ever drawn a map in the dirt to show someone where you live? Such drawings were some of the earliest maps. Other early maps were made of sticks tied together or pieces of wood sewn into a piece of seal skin. People have used maps for thousands of years to show where places are, how far it is from one place to another, and the direction to travel to get from here to there. Maps are important tools. Maps tell us where to catch a bus and where that bus will take us. Maps help us to find a friend's house in a part of town that is new to us. Maps help us to plan vacation trips. They help us to learn about the town or state to which we're moving. Direction. Direction is one of the most important things we can learn from a map. You can use direction every day. Left, right, forward, back, up, down. But these directions depend on where you are in which way you are facing. Maps use the directions north, south, east, and west. These directions do not change, and for that reason, they're known as the cardinal directions. North is always towards the north pole of the earth. If you stand facing the north pole, east will always be to your right, west will always be to your left, and south will always be behind you. When you're looking at a map, usually north will be at the top. However, that's not always true. You must check to be sure. Map makers use a compass rose or a north arrow to show direction. If there is no compass rose or north arrow or other symbol to indicate direction, then north should be the top of the map. Let's look at some examples of how to use and find direction on a map. All right, so now let's look at some examples. First, we wanna begin by looking at the cardinal directions. These are the four points you'll see most often when we're talking about direction this year. These are north, south, east, and west. A good way to remember their orientation to each other is never eat soggy waffles. Another way to remember is never eat shredded wheat. Whatever way you choose to remember, it's important to factor in that north is always opposite of south, east is always opposite of west. And once we have that, we can find any place in any direction as long as we know one of our directions. This is why sometimes we will see what's called the north arrow. The north arrow always looks something like this. This gives us a good example of where north, south, east, and west would be by only giving us the northern direction. So as you can see, our north is here. We know that opposite of north is south. So when we see a map with just north labeled, we can find south. We also know our acronym to remember is never eat shredded wheat. So now we know where east is and we know where west is. Direction is easy as long as we understand the compass rows. The last thing we need to talk about is intermediate directions. Intermediate directions looks at the points which are between north, east, south, and west. A good way to remember this is that it's never eat soggy waffles, but then when we combine the N and the E and we're looking between, we have northeast. When we're combining the east and the south, we have southeast. When we have the south and the west, we have the southwest. And when we're combining north and west, we obviously have northwest. Now, the intermediate directions are important to us because most places on Earth are not going to be exactly broken into our north, south, east, and west. So we'll be talking about direction a lot this year. So if you have any questions, make sure you rewind this and listen to it again. Distance. Let's pretend you're making a drawing of a person you're probably not going to make the drawing as big as the person. That would take a piece of paper the same size as them. A map is a drawing of a part of Earth. A map as big as Earth would be far too large to put in our pocket and be useful. Maps are drawn so that a certain distance on the map represents a much larger distance on Earth. This makes it possible to show the whole Earth on a piece of paper. Maps can vary in size, of course. Our classroom has maps hanging up that may be much larger than the ones that can fit in your book, but they both show the same earth. Maps have a scale that will tell us the distance it is on the map 
that represents the distance on Earth. Next, let's look at some examples of how we'll use a scale to realize the difference between our map and Earth. Here are some examples of map scales. Notice that all lines are the same length, but that each line represents a different distance on the Earth. Also notice that the same scale can tell how many miles and how many kilometers each distance on the map stands for. Using the scale to measure distances between places on a map is easy. Use a piece of paper, like this one. Put the edge of the paper between the two points you wish to measure and make a mark on the paper at each point, as you can see here and here. Then put the piece of paper on the map scale with one mark at zero and the other mark will tell you the distance. In this case, it would be one and a half miles. If the scale is not long enough, mark where it ends on the paper. Then slide the paper to the left of the line so that you can line up a new mark with zero. Do this as many times as is necessary. Then multiply the number of spaces you've created by the total length of the scale. So for example, if you have a scale that represents 100 miles and you ended up marking three complete scales, you'd mul multiply three by 100. If it was three and a half times you created your, your marks, you would end up with 350. See, map scale doesn't have to be difficult if we use this trick.